Hey y'all, Roland Smith here, Mount Bushcrafters Alliance. This is part three in a series on trapping in southeastern Kentucky. Now, if you've cleaned your traps, you've dyed your traps, you're ready for the final stage before putting your traps in service. That's waxing. Now, I'll try not to make this video too long. I'm already running behind, so we'll get right into this. Uh, after you wax your traps, you do not touch your traps without having gloves on. You want to keep them as scent free as possible. Now, I've got my traps ready behind me. They're free of debris, uh, leaves, sticks, twigs. You want to keep that stuff off your traps. So I've got them on an old uh, wool blanket to keep debris from getting into my water. When you get debris into that water, it will attach to that wax and will adhere to your traps. Now, having said that, a lot of people, they put a stick or, or, or a nail or something in between the jaws of their traps that gives a good coating. Because once you wax that trap, it'll, it'll put a seal in between those jaws. And when you set that trap, those jaws will remain together. And in the wintertime, sometimes they're hard to get apart when it's got a complete wax seal around it. But I don't do that. The reason I don't do that is because I don't want anything, and that wax is super slick. I don't want anything in between uh, those jaws and whatever I'm after because it makes it super slick. And what I use is paraffin wax. Paraffin wax, my water's already boiling. Paraffin wax is a canning wax. You can buy it at the local store. You can, you can order it offline, but it's cheaper just to, uh, just to uh, like go to Walmart or the dollar store, wherever you can get it and get it. Uh, it's non-clumping, see? It's, it's not brittle. That wax is already starting to melt. And I'll, I'll try not to jostle the camera too bad, but I'll turn that around and show you what I've got going on. Good day. It's a real good day. Now people say, well, how much wax do you buy to the ratio of traps that you have? I usually buy three or four pounds, sometimes more, because you can reuse that wax. When that water cools, that wax will, will stay on top of that water, of course. And you can break that wax off and put it in a container for later use. Maybe you want to reboil your traps, rewax your traps. Maybe you've got a trap or two that's uh, uh, that's been taken out of service and had to be repaired and you've had to handle it. So what you want to do is uh, you want to repair that trap. And if you want to put it back in line or you just hang it up and... and, and run it back through the cycle. But like I said, I'll try not to jostle the camera too bad. That wax is already starting to, to melt. Uh, due to time constraint, I went ahead and, and filled up my number three wash tub with water and built my fire and got everything going. This is a crucial part in the waxing process. I'll try to turn the camera where you can see what I'm doing. That way you'll kind of know what's going on.
I've got a little rod here that will allow me to uh, handle my traps, keeping them scent free. I've got a piece of roofing metal over here that I'm going to lay my traps on and let them cool before I hang them. A lot of people just go in and hang them, that's fine too, but I'll lay them on that metal, let them cool. That way I can situate the change as I want to because them babies are going to be hot because they're in boiling water. There's a process to it all, but it pays off, I'm telling you. Like I said, I'll try not to make this video too long, but it is what it is. You gotta go through the process, you gotta go through the steps. And you can see as I dip the the rod into the water, you get a nice coating of wax. That's what you want to see. I'll try to give you a shot of this. Let you know what's going on. I hope I can. And I've probably got... I don't know, probably about 20 more maybe under the woodshed and as well on as on the blanket I guess. I'm running about 40, I'm running probably about 40, uh, about 46 traps, cold spring traps. I've got 10 DPs and I've got some uh, a few 110 kind of bears. That's what I'll be running all season. Let's see if I can get this trap to cool off and show you what we've got. Yeah, it's a nice coating. That's a real nice coating. That's all wax right there. Every bit of that. And that's what you're after.
once they cool off, give you an idea of what they look like, what they'll be. Here's one of the color bears. As you can see, the wax, that, when that dries, that'll be super, super sleek. So, I'll try to give you a shot of this. Well, if I can or not, this is my woodshed. Yeah, they've got a good seal on them. Yeah, they look good. You see that wax build up, wax run off. When those super, when those get dry, they'll be super slick. But, nevertheless, that's how you prep your traps for the season when it comes to waxing your traps. I've tried not to make this video too long. I know it's kind of a long, lengthy video, but uh, there's a little bit of work involved, but well worth the effort and the payoff. Now that these traps cool, I'll get them hung up and get them out of the way. But uh, take care of a few more items, a few more things. In these videos, you'll be uh, on the trap line with me. You'll be on winter camps. I'll be using my poke sled. Uh, different equipment for the seasons change. But this is Roland Smith Mountain Bushcrafters Alliance, and as I always say, go farther, stay longer.
we'll get you out in the field.